Welcome to Fright Fix. My name's Sook. My name's Celia. How are you doing this week, Celia? Yeah, I'm not too bad. The sun's shining for the first time in about a week, so I'm pretty happy. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I mean, uh, recording episodes of Fright Fix with you is definitely a highlight of my week, and I always look forward to it. Absolutely, so do I. It just breaks up the week to do something that we actually like, and it's really, really fun. <laughs> So this week, we have a shorter Quick Fix episode for you. You can find Fright Fix anywhere you listen to podcasts and follow us on social media at Fright Fix Podcast. So we watched the 2016 film, I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House, which is written and directed by Osgood Perkins. It stars Ruth Wilson as Lily. Paul Apprentice as Iris, and Lucy Boynton as Polly. Before we continue, as always, I'm going to give a spoiler warning. So if you haven't already watched the film, you can find it on Netflix. So go and watch it and come back and we'll be waiting. So a quick rundown of the film. A young nurse, Lily, moves into a secluded old house to care for an elderly, reclusive horror novelist. But it seems the pair are not entirely alone. The story follows Lily as she is haunted by a figure dressed in white, who turns out to be Polly, the homeowner of the house in the 1800s, who was killed by her husband. Cecilia, firstly, before I ask you what your overall thoughts on the movie mm. were, how did this movie come to your attention? How did you even find out about it? Because I'd never even heard of it. Mm, that is a very good question. And I know we were kind of saying, oh, it's such a mouthful. I am the pretty thing that lives in this house. Mm. But I often think of Netflix as, you know, you go into a bookshop and you do judge a book by its cover and you want to buy the book that has the cool title <laughs> or, you know, something like that. And that's yeah. kind of what happened. I saw it and I thought, I've never heard of a title like that before. And it had a very ghosty, um, you know, uh, well, thumbnail. Front. Yeah, thumbnail. Mm. And I thought, yeah, this is kind of up my street. I feel like it might be something that we'd enjoy. Um, and that was honestly the only reason. It was very <laughs> basic, but I thought, I am the pretty thing that lives in this house. Never heard of anything like that before. Yeah. Usually, you know, um, one word, shock horror, this is a ghost film. Yeah. Not this film. <laughs> yeah, because when you told me the name of the movie, I had to read it like three times. Um, and uh, I thought, wait, it, it, she's made a mistake. This isn't some kind of teen coming of age movie or something. <laughs> 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 So yeah, it didn't, didn't sound very ghostly or spooky or anything, but I was like, okay. Yeah, that's a very good point. If you didn't see the ghostly apparition on the thumbnail, it could have been um, a cheesy rom-com or something like that. <laughs> it's definitely not that. <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely. Yeah, the opposite of... Uh, yeah, and I wouldn't want an angsty 16-year-old to watch this thinking they're going to get some relationship advice or <laughs> some uh, self-esteem brownie points because no, I don't no, think no. they would. I wouldn't recommend anyone going to Netflix for relationship advice anyway. No, very true. But I'm sure a lot of people do. <laughs> no, absolutely. Desperate times. So, yeah. So, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely curious as to what your overall thoughts on this movie are. Yeah, I mean, I think we're either going to be on the same page or on completely opposite pages. I'm yeah. not sure. I'm glad we don't discuss this ahead of recording, actually. So. so am I. I mean, I was really tempted when I was watching it to be texting you. Um, yeah. But I thought, you know what? I'm just going to leave it and wait for the <laughs> podcast episode. Obviously, it's very slow burning. Yes. And it's cinematically intriguing. Lots of the shots are long shots. They are very well thought out. Um, but... <laughs> 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 this is the part I'm waiting for. <laughs> Story-wise, I mean, can you think of the story? Like, could you say the story in one sentence, which is a woman goes to a house to look after another woman, there's a ghost, she dies. I mean, not much happens. And I want more. I always love the backstory of ghosts. Yeah. You know, how they got there. Are they, venge are they vengeful? Are they good spirits? Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of those slow scenes could have taken place in Polly's time you know, the eight, back in the 1800s, you sure. had a few flashbacks of Polly, yeah. but not a lot. And I thought, okay, if they're all going to be long shots in the present tense, um, <laughs> I just wanted a bit more of what Polly's story was and yeah. and things like that. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so, so with this film, I think I got about 10 minutes or 20 minutes into it when I felt like this... 
The movie feels like something that maybe our old English teacher would have made us read or something. I, I can imagine that, like, if this was, I don't, I don't actually know if this was based on a book or not, but it felt like it was based on something that maybe would have been terrifying in 1760 or something. A hundred percent. And I'm so annoyed because you've taken my good point. Oh, really? That's exactly what I was going to say. So I thought this was a book. In fact, I was convinced it was a book because... Hmm. One of the things I did like about the film was the narration. I thought it was really beautiful. I thought that they really spent a lot of time on, you know, Lily talking through what was happening. Right. And it just convinced me that that must have been from a book because the way that it, the pacing of the film yeah. feels very much like a book. Yeah. And I was so surprised when I found out that it isn't a book. It wasn't at all, no. No, because it was written and directed by Osgood Perkins. Mm. And I do wonder whether, you know, it would have been better as a book. I can imagine it being really good as a book, but it for me, it it just didn't work as well as a film. No, 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 no. It's um, I, I, I wasn't quite. You know how the movie opens with that with a line something along the lines of you know houses can't be sold, can't be bought by the living. They're only they're only borrowed from the ghosts of the dead or something. Yeah, like that line. Even as it was being said, it to me it just felt. Like it would something I would have heard from a seventies or eighties horror movie or something. Yeah. But with this film, like for in that that particular moment when when that line's being said, like visually, sonically, and the way the narration said, kind of made that line sound credible. Mm. Um, but uh, but that but that as a concept, I felt like uh, I didn't know how much my. I mean, I was looking, I was interested to see which direction they were going to go in with that yeah. concept, because that the concept of the movie is told, like is said right at the very beginning. And um, mm. but yeah, it didn't really do anything with it, and there wasn't. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> If you're going to yeah. do a haunted house, do a haunted house. Like, do go a bit further with it. It did. Yeah. That just made me think, actually. Yeah. Do you think it was a choice of the film because it's based around a horror novelist mm -hmm. that it is supposed to be like a book or a horror, an old horror film because it's taking inspiration from uh, what's her name, Iris, who's mm -hmm. the horror novelist that lives in the house, and that potentially what Lily is saying might be from one of her books maybe one of lily's books uh iris's books i don't know quite possibly um yeah i i actually no i did think that it was just uh from uh, one of iris's books oh yeah no I, I hadn't thought about that until just mm, now yeah i just assumed that's what it was i, I just assumed she uh, lily was just reading reading from it because uh, nice. Lily's character just seemed like a bit of a scaredy cat to to kind of come up with something like that herself. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, overall, um, I mean, I just I, my I mean, my overall thoughts with the movie, it just felt like a very arty, slow burning movie. Yeah. Um, it didn't feel like it was something that was particularly commercial. No. It kind of made me think, like, what's going on here? Like, what's the meaning <laughs> of yeah. this movie? Like. Um, and uh, out of the two of us, I always find that you're way more, you see way more depth than I ever do. And I was just so curious to like, what, like Celia's obviously gonna know straight away, like what the meaning of this is, what's, the, what's the, you know, were the, the mold on the arms, like some kind of metaphor or something? Like I just, for the life of me, could not figure out what the point of this movie was. Um, it's hard. Like I could. I could barely figure out myself. It took me a long time to kind of get an idea that because Polly was put in the walls of the house when mm -hmm. she was killed, yeah, that 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 all I could get from it was that the mold was symbolizing her her pain and her grief, and that it was being transferred onto Lily because she was living in the house. So she's getting that um, she was becoming intertwined with the history of the house because yeah. she's only yeah. borrowing it from Polly. That's all I could think of. But honestly, I was the same. I couldn't, I, you, you know me, I love looking into the deeper meanings of things. Yeah. I did try really, really hard to find ones that I um, thought could could go through the whole film and I could look at the film in a different light. But I really couldn't find much yeah. that I thought was a, a a string that could connect a lot of different things together. Mm. Um I feel like there wasn't a lot to work with. Like there's only so much you can take from a long shot looking at a sink, you know? <laughs> oh man. Yeah, cuz the cuz the film wasn't particularly uh it's not like it was a a, a scary movie or a, or an ent particularly entertaining movie no. to, like in you know for a general audience. I mean, and um it felt very art house and uh I just 
Yeah, I mean. Yeah. What, well, what did you think of the acting and the casting choices then? Because you know the the way that the film is is written and directed can be different from, I suppose, the way that it's acted and the people that they choose. Yeah. Yeah. No. no yeah, that's a really good point. So, um, I I, I like Ruth Wilson. Um, mm-hmm. who played uh, Lily and I felt so I think she's uh, she's also in the TV show Luther yeah and she was one of my favorite bits out of that show and there's something about her eyes it's just like they make me feel really uncomfortable and I never quite know where I stand uh, with her as a as a viewer yeah and so um, I thought she was a good choice for the role but mm-hmm. I don't think they gave her much to do yeah what were your thoughts on the uh performances and yeah casting. i mean the the same thing the i've only seen um ruth wilson as alice morgan on luther hmm. and she's almost the opposite she's cold she's brave she's stern she's kind of psycho yeah yeah and alice um and lily is the opposite of that like he said before a scaredy cat and is very wide-eyed yeah. and almost childlike in a way very I feel like the way she's mm, the way she speaks to people on the phone. It sounds like a teenager, <laughs> you know. And so I thought she was good. I think we said this for a different episode as well about somebody who you know they're a good act- actor from the work that they've done, but they haven't been done justice by the film they're in. So she mm. didn't have, like you say, enough to work with to be able to show much because yeah. you know even the death scene when she walks down the stairs and I mean you we're never told how she dies. She just kind of dies of shock, maybe. Yeah, that's what I I just yeah, yeah. that's why I assumed as well. Yeah, that's the only time that we've seen her really frightened, and then she dies, and then that's it. And you know she just goes through the film quite scared. Um, yeah, and yeah, not much of a dynamic character that she was given. Um, And also the character itself of Lily really annoyed me (laughs) because she, (laughs) again, the opposite of what I want, which is somebody who's really interested in the hauntings of the house. You know, if I was there, I'd be asking Iris so many questions (laughs) and she just doesn't want to get involved. And I know that that's obviously what the film's going for, but part of me was just like, oh, please just ask her who Polly is why she's seen her you know what what are in all those letters that she took out of that box she Mm. never we never really saw what can the book tell her about polly and things like that and it just seemed like they set loads of ideas up and then never let them come to fruition yeah it was very surface level and uh they didn't yeah there was absolutely no depth or or none of that depth was explored at least yeah yeah feel like it could have been just dug in you could you could cut it cut all the long scenes in half and they'd still be very effective <laughs> and then you've got half the time back and you can actually explore even just one of those things if she you know she finds that box with letters that Polly has written and they're covered in mold and she takes them out and she reads maybe one or two mm. but what else was in that box what could we learn about Polly as a person to make her more three-dimensional than just you know the apparition we could have learned quite a lot from that we could have learned way more about Iris and about her life as a, a horror novelist and her yes, relationship with Polly. That would have been interesting, yeah. And to see why she was so attached to Polly as well, because, it, you know, we don't get to see a lot of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> Did you have a, a favourite part of the movie? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to say favourite scene, but oh. it's really hard, isn't it? I think... I get that the film's supposed to be slow burning and it makes you think that that's that that's what it's going for. It's going for a very art house um, style of film. But I did feel a bit cheated. I did feel like I needed more. <laughs> you know, I did like those black backdrop scenes where they have either. I think it was Polly at the beginning where there's double of her that are kind of over each other. And so she moves and then one part of her moves and so mm-hmm. another part of her moves later and there's just this weird ghosty yeah. thing that they cut through. And I thought that was really clever because that is, in my head, if ghosts were real, that's kind of what I think they'd look like. Oh, okay. They would be all mixed up and slightly out of focus all the time. Sure. sure and so sure. that kind of gave me, it was the only thing that kind of gave me a shiver because I was thinking, oh, this is cool. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit different. And they do it later with Lily as well. And I think she's chewing on... On the end of her hoodie right. because she does that in the film maybe once or twice when she's watching tv she chews on the end of her hoodie and then in that um 
kind of cut scene where she is supposed to be a ghost, I think, um, in a black backdrop. It looks like something white's coming out of her mouth and she's like chewing on it. But I think what it is, it's her chewing the end of her hoodie, but it looks really weird and kind of gross (laughs) when it's all blurred out. So I was like, okay, yeah, I like that. I do like that representation of ghosts and also the slow motion that their time is not exactly like our time. Sure, sure. And things like that. Um, Because presumably ghosts are around forever and they maybe lose all perspective. All sense of time and and space and, you know, they can come out and not be whole and then they can come back together and all those kind of things. I thought, yeah, I like that representation. What about you? Did you have a favorite scene? Oh man, I really struggled, and uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think your description was very generous there, to be honest. Um, and um, I think the one bit where I kind of I'm, I want to say woke up mm-hmm. the film was probably the bit when um, Polly. I think is it Polly? I'm forgetting the names now. It is Polly right? The the girl from the past. Yeah. Where she's uh, struck with I think a hammer or something. Mm-hmm. By um. I think I, I think I assume it's her husband. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was that that kind of like snapped me back into the film for a brief moment because it just kind of ha- I, I suppose I could I could sense there was a build up to something there, but mm. I don't know. Like the, the whole movie is fairly slow paced, and that bit was mm. very fast. So it kind of um, that was the one bit I kind of remembered. And um, yeah, even though it happens for a brief second, it's uh, that was probably my standout moment from the film. And then you see the uh, where the walls are covered in blood, and he's. Um, hiding mm. her in her body in the walls and I, th- I thought that was it was probably probably my only favorite bit yeah. in the movie <laughs> it's because it's a bit different isn't it it's like oh something's actually happened that means that all this build-up was worth something yeah yeah it's like, like a catalyzing it's... event or whatever so yeah, yeah. It, an interesting part i suppose yeah yeah i mean uh, i mean to give to give credit to the um cinematographer or the director whoever was responsible i mean every shot in the film was in itself in isolation each shot was kind of like perfectly composed absolutely yeah uh, yeah that like you could probably take a screenshot of anywhere in the movie and it would feel like some kind i don't want to say painting but it felt like an artistic shot yeah there could be a, it would almost work really well as an art exhibition where you have all of these stills rather than having to watch it as a film. Because you're right, there are, I think they played with colour really well. Like everything was very white and clean and it didn't feel like a haunted house. No. But it was also isolated because you're you're always in the house. You're feeling that isolation with Lily. You know, there are there are bits of the film where you think it stands out from other films, definitely. And I have to give the film credit for that because I will always remember it, even if I don't, particularly enjoy it and I wouldn't watch it again that doesn't mean that there weren't elements where I thought okay this is different and I'm intrigued I just wish it went somewhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like you know with them um, haunted houses and movies normally they're like these kind of dark houses covered in webs and more mm-hmm. black walls and black, black. and everything and this film was almost like what if that haunted house wasn't covered in webs and wasn't black walls and black furniture and black everything and yeah yeah that's what it's it's trying to break the mold of what a haunted house could be. Mm. Um, and I suppose the representation of ghosts as as not really a threat. There wasn't, well, it's kind of what I did, one of the things I didn't like about the film was that there wasn't much of a threat. Mm. And that we're told at the beginning that Lily dies. I think she says, I've just turned 28 and by the time I'm 20, I'll never turn 29 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. So we already know she's going to die. And so that does kind of take away this idea that she might get out. Yeah. So, there's no, I'm not on the edge of my seat hoping that Lily will survive. One, because we didn't really get to understand the character very well. But two, her fate's been sealed. So, yeah. yeah. There's no stakes. There's no stakes. There's yeah. none at all. And even if she tried to fight a bit <laughs> before she died, <laughs> or, you know, even Iris's death as well, didn't do anything for the film. She was just dead after a while. And, you know, it's like, well, we didn't know Iris. We didn't have a connection to her. So... All of these things build up and then you're just left with a what you already knew was going to happen because they tell you at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. It's like, why would you care? You didn't know yeah, them. exactly. Was there anything that you didn't like sp- specifically about the film? <laughs> yeah. And I was yeah. kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, getting into specifics, I yeah. think this list will probably be a bit longer than the stuff I did like. So, um, so there were 
a lot of interesting visual choices I felt through the movie. Mm -hmm. So like every room almost felt the same to me. Yeah. Which in itself isn't a a bad thing, but like um, there was a lot of times where the camera was very close to to Lily and um, it didn't really give me a chance to kind of absorb the geography of each room. Yeah. I know that probably doesn't mean anything, but it's like the whole film's set in this one house and I think it would be good to, um, to, you know, get to know that one location that the character's in. Mm. and um yeah so that that kind of annoyed me a little bit but not but it wasn't a deal breaker or anything and uh the but the thing that was annoying for me was um there was some uh moments where lily was scared or where certain things happened or uh, but it's like i wanted to see and focus in on lily's expressions at certain points like for example yeah. when the phone gets uh pulled out of her hand by the ghost mm-hmm. but i remember that bit specifically like that would have been a perfect opportunity to, for the filmmakers to like focus in on her face and her reaction, but it seemed more focused on looking at her back and yeah, um, creating some kind of artistic shot with the phone on the floor and her out of shot. It's like it's like the filmmaker didn't really care too much about Lily's character. Yeah, like um, because I think that's what what makes the audience connect to a character is like how they react to hauntings and whatnot. You want to kind of be up in their face. I mean, that would have been yeah. like. Yeah, so that was a that was a bit annoying. Now the thing that uh, that I found like the the biggest violation in this film, <laughs> and, and, and you've already mentioned it to be honest, um, is the film could have been significantly shorter. Yeah, it just it felt like it was artificially padded out in a in a in a really uh, I don't know. It's like they didn't didn't even care. It's like they knew they were doing it and they didn't care. It's yeah. like that sh- like shots. Many of the film's shots lingered for far too long Mm. longer than they should have and in if the shots had something visually interesting about them I wouldn't have minded if the shots lingered but it was the camera was just lingering on on nothing like there was occasions where it was just a wall or something Mm. and um like Celia there were there were the second half of this movie there were portions of this movie which I watched at one and a half speed really you'd got to that point where you're like I have to speed this up yeah, 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 yeah. No, for real. And the, the the real funny thing is, it didn't even notice that it was going really like the characters, like Lily, there were points she was moving so slow mm. that were even at one and a half speed on Netflix, you can change the speed yeah. of the movie on, um, on the laptop at least. And uh, it looked normal. It didn't even notice yeah. the difference. Didn't notice the difference at all. And, and um, it's not having an effect. You know, I, I get pacing, but there there is a limit of how you can make a long drawn out film even longer it's with no with, with it's not giving anything to the film no yeah. no and and the thing is like i think sometimes uh, allowing a shot to breathe can be very powerful when done mm. sparingly or yeah. when it wants to emphasize a like an event in a film or like a moment a character building moment or something but doing it throughout the entire movie yeah it's, it's like it's uh, the draining dra- on yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you're not asking... getting any relief. Like, there's nothing actually happening. So, yeah. no. And as you mentioned earlier about feeling cheated, it's de- it demands a lot of the viewer. Yeah. It's ask- it's unfair almost. And uh, mm-hmm. a part of me can't help thinking that maybe the director or the team realized that their movie is actually only a half hour TV show. Yeah, <laughs> and they, and they to stretch it out for two hours <laughs> or whatever it was. Yeah, I don't think it would have lost its meaning if those those shots weren't as long or if there weren't that many what felt like buffer shots in between i think the film would still have its same meaning but it i think you said surface level earlier and yeah it felt like it had scratched the surface of what could have been a really good film and if they had gone a bit further with things like there's a bit at the end where lily has kind of goes back in time and she's watching iris write the novel yeah and she's kind of peeking through and iris i think she kind of clocks that someone's there and she gets up and walks yeah, towards the door. Yeah, yeah. And that's it. You know, nothing happens. Nothing actually happens. <laughs> and that's what the whole film is. Nothing actually happens. You get you get this build up. You have all of these ideas of what could happen. And then for some artistic reason, they decided <laughs> not to give it to you. And you know, it just <sighs> The film doesn't give you anything. It gives you lit- it gives you nothing. And then to top it all off, it doesn't give you anything. And then the one thing it does give you, which is um, a full body apparition of Polly following Lily, is mm-hmm. the most B tech uh, <laughs> version of a ghost I have ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's just a translucent woman with her head on backwards. I'm like, oh my, it really. 
of everything you could have done to show the actual ghost, you decide just to put her there and make her translucent. Yeah, the film could have definitely benefited from um, holding off on maybe revealing the ghost. It revealed the ghost far too early in the film. Yeah. And uh, it just, there was no threat there whatsoever. No no threat. And if you are going to reveal a ghost so early on, make sure that they are present throughout in a really effective way. Mm. and not just popping up in the past and then popping up as a translucent ghost and then I suppose the only bit that kind of scared me was when Polly pops up Polly pops up Polly pops up in the tv screen when yes. Lily turns the tv off you almost get a glimmer of hope that there's going to be a threat yeah but that's it again we get cheated we think that maybe there's going to be a threat and then there isn't one no 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 oh man um <laughs> It's not a bit cathartic, right? <laughs> just got everything out. I would say one thing I'm just thinking about, what I did like, um, and I wish other films might do a little bit more, um, was there's a bit that keeps happening where the end, the edge of the rug by the stairs is flipped over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I quite like that. I thought that was a really subtle way of showing that there's somebody else in the house and that unless you're looking for that, you wouldn't notice. So Lily comes down the stairs and she pushes the rug back to how it's supposed to be without thinking about it and kind of in your head you're like oh notice that notice that that's but again they don't actually do anything with it but I quite like that idea of really subtle things changing in the house and that somebody just goes over and you know if you have um an object on your mantelpiece and it's moved and you just move it back and you don't do anything about it whereas the viewer knows that that actually meant something yeah Um, yeah but but because the because the ghost was revealed so early and it kind of made everything else yeah inconsequential yeah. almost cuz i don't know I, I i really really did not like this film yeah i could not i, I try my best to find enough. what's that sorry i think that's fair enough i think we can have a few that we just don't like no 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 of course of course this is a this is a warning viewers to to save their time <laughs> yeah unless you want to look at a 18th century house, no, 17th century house in America for a very long time. Mm. <laughs> you don't need to see this film. If you're very into the architecture, architecture. of old, <laughs> old houses and you really like looking at blackberries and sinks and things like that. Yeah, you're uh, an expert in mould. <laughs> and an expert in mould and you're highly fascinated with the, with the inner workings of, uh, of the house, then yeah, I don't think you need to watch this film. Out of one, one to ten... What would you Ooh. rate it? Um, this is going to sound really harsh, but I would give it one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I, I apologize that's if that's one. a bit extreme, but <laughs> it, it, what about you? Mm, I'm going to say oh, three. Oh and wow! I'm very. Mm, do I want to give it that much? Because I was actually a little bit annoyed when it finished. Why? Just because I hadn't got anything from it, and I'd wasted an hour and a whatever of my life. <laughs> So maybe because of that feeling, I'll give it a two. Okay. I'll give it a two because there were elements of it sure. that I thought if they pushed it further, I would have really enjoyed, you know? Right. So there were kind of the foundations of a good film, of a good ghosty film. Sure, 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 sure. Okay, fair enough. I mean, if I could have, I mean, I, I didn't give it zero. I gave it one probably because the, the visuals were fairly yeah thought through and whatnot, but but not but i don't feel like the visuals serve the story in any in any meaningful way no i'll stick with my one <laughs> yeah i agree i mean we are a horror podcast and we do like to get scared and i think that's the other part of it as well i can't wait for the the time where we review a film that actually shakes me to my core Ooh. because you know the there is something so fun about that. And I know a lot of our viewers would also like to be scared by horror films or kind of intrigued by the apparitions or the demons or whatever is is the is the enemy of the film. But yeah, yeah. you just don't get anything with this. Um, and so I wouldn't even class it as a horror film. And myself. neither should Netflix. <laughs> and neither should Netflix. It yeah. should be firmly in the art house kind of independent feel of Ace stylistic choice yeah well, i'm not even using the word film but <laughs> <laughs> oh so so with this um with this movie i didn't really have any trivia as such uh, i don't there wasn't really much out there but um just something i thought was quite interesting which actually has nothing to do with the movie <laughs> but uh, you know the um the, there's a brief moment where where lily's watching a movie like a war movie or something it seems like on tv yeah. So that guy, there's a guy on the screen holding a rifle. 
Mm-hmm. He's like crying or something. Yeah, like I think he's shooting or something. Um, yeah, and um, he's actually the father of the director. Oh, really? That yeah, is yeah, a... yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's on screen. That's Anthony Perkins. Ah. So the the lead from Psycho. Yeah. And uh, Osgood Perkins being his son. Right. And yeah. and didn't Anthony Perkins and the actress that plays Iris work together? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Ah, so there is a little bit of kind of back connections yeah. in there. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And um, just uh, just a, a, another thing I, I found quite interesting or, or quite tragic, really. So obviously, Anthony Perkins passed away in like the early 90s. Right. And... Uh, and Barry Berenson, who was Oz's, Oz, Oz's, Osgood's mother, um, yeah. was actually uh, killed uh, in during 9-11. She was, she was on one really? of the flights. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. my God, that's terrible. Yeah. Mm. I thought that was quite a, a shocking Yeah, uh, absolutely. Fact. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Is there anything more you think we can cover or are we good well i i would have loved to go into the deeper meanings of the film um i tried my hardest that's all i'm gonna say (laughs) i didn't come up with much i i honestly thought the blackberries staining her hands meant something um if anybody knows they can find our email address on our website and let me know what the deeper meanings are to the film for a brief moment i thought those berries were actually like black olives or something (laughs) did you it just has a basket full of black olives <laughs> I, I would <laughs> love olives <laughs> and she this is like a perfect representation of the film she washes the blackberries and then doesn't do anything with them that to me is a metaphor for this film they set you up and then they never actually do anything you know what that perfectly summarizes the movie i think <laughs> <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this month's fright fix join us next month as we'll explore a new horror film We will be posting the movie a few days before the podcast episode is released on our social media. So be sure to follow us at Fright Fix if you want to watch the film ahead of time. If you would like to send us a message or want us to cover a scary movie on an upcoming episode, please feel free to contact us on Instagram or Twitter or email us at podcast at frightfix.com. See you next time.